Rainbow Equine have come back today to take a second look at Apollo's tooth. They've brought with them their horoscopy machine, which shines a light on a camera to take pictures of the affected tooth. Gaps between the teeth should be nice and pink, you know, if you all move, you know, if the gums should come nicely oh, down see, to the yes. teeth, oh, we'll you get to that one, yes, we'll have a hole here, I'll just power wash the hole over the food out of that. So grade two to three is that sort of broad line if you want to do something about it. Right. What we'll do is possibly work us because it's packing a load of feed up the side of it. Yeah. So what we might just do is do a little bit of it's quite rigid at the back, so I might just try and clean them out. Do a little bit more flattening more than you'd usually do. Right. And then the hole I was talking about is um, where? Yeah, here. Yeah, that one. Oh, right. yes, there. It's very. Yeah. Yes. And that's. So that's the back of the very last two. Right. And that black bit there coming in. That. Oh, it's, it's gone. <laughs> yes, that and dark there. black. There. Yes. Three, sort of oh yes. The and then what's that there? there? That is that. That's a gap between the teeth as well. Uh, so that is. So it's getting a bit of food packing. Packing in there. On the teeth. This is between the teeth here. Yes, it's good. It's good. Then you can compare, can't you? Yeah, when you next come to see if it's better or worse. Okay. Hang on, I'll just wash that off. Okay. You can see how it's damaging the side, the side of the teeth as well. All that. That's damaging, yeah. yes. When you carry a book of carries. I think the way we treat this, what he's basically doing is the way that the teeth lock into the wall, not straight on the straight, they're slightly offset. Okay? And they have ridges, like that. Yeah. Okay, going up and down. Yeah. Now if they've got too much of a ridge, it pushes feed, it can push feed in between the two teeth. Okay? So, um, and in the wild they cope with it, they wouldn't last as long as it eventually caused a problem. Um, but if that's left there for long enough, and how long a piece of string, then you'll get food back there on the side like we've got with him, and it'll go up between the teeth and you'll end up with a root infection and the tooth will have to come out. Okay. So, in a perfect world, we don't take so much tooth off, we take them so they don't touch. Obviously, because then they couldn't eat. Okay? Yeah. But when we've got specific areas of the mouth where we can, because he's got the rest of the mouth to eat with, what I'm going to do is flatten those off slightly, so he's not got any ridges, so I'm going to take them flatter than I normally would, so yes. I'll stop finding it. <laughs> um, so I'm going to flatten them off instead of having the ridges, yes. 
and I'm going to take them back just a couple of millimetres, yeah. but it just takes that little bit of pressure off. So he'll still be able to chew with it a bit, yeah. but he won't be ramming them down in the side of the teeth. And we're trying to give the gum a bit of a rest. Yes. That's conservative management to start off right. with. He's only got tiny little gaps, it's only a bit of peripheral carry. So that, along with washing his mouth out, might fix the problem. Okay. If it's not, if it's getting worse, if the teeth are a problem, then we can be much more aggressive by sort of widening the gap. So, you know, anything that, go, anything that goes in comes, comes out, out again, yeah. but actually they're not that big gaps at the moment. So we prefer not to do that because obviously you can damage the teeth by doing that, you know. Yeah. Um, and then really we'd have him in um, if we were going to start doing that so we can use a much more precise tools. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But at the moment, I think because it's relatively minor, it's been caught early, then like, yeah. we'll just do that and we'll see how we get. to stop, especially on the, you're not going to necessarily stop everything in the pack in between the teeth, we will have to clear that out every now and again, but if it's, it's if that then holds stuff against the side of the teeth, especially halos and things like that, it's got sugar in it, it sits there and it prevents next to the side of the tooth and it sort of basically eats away the tooth. So if you can shift that away yeah. every day, yeah. or if he's really good at it, morning and night, you know, fine. Yes. Um, it's normally easy when they're just coming off grass because that's obviously a lot softer and easier to shift, whereas hay and hay they sort of stick yeah. around a bit longer, so a bit more saliva, say overnight or whatever is easier. Then you can just keep it keep it from sitting there for sort of... Um, basically, he needs to... The rest of the tooth needs to erupt out, and he needs to wear down that bit of damaged tooth, and hopefully if we can keep the stuff that's coming out of his gum and replacing it, if we can keep that healthy, then you've got healthy teeth coming out. Okay. Um, but I think we need to make sure we keep it in check. I mean, yes. we check those ones on the outside and the one on the top as well. Right. Yeah. Yes. Um, 